Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremton News at 6 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. We once again are beginning with breaking news at this hour. The Pentagon confirming tonight a suspected Chinese spy balloon has been spotted over the U.S. It was spotted over Billings, Montana. Our Kyle Simchuk is following this situation closely tonight. And Kyle, what can you share with us at this hour? Well, the Pentagon is now tracking this reported Chinese spy balloon. We've also learned that President Joe Biden has been briefed on this bizarre incident, which disrupted flights at the Billings Airport. It's been there stationary for about the last 35 minutes. Chase Doe could hardly believe his eyes looking up from his driveway in Billings, Montana. Right now, there is a ground stop on our airport, and this thing is up in the sky. The U.S. government believes that thing is actually a Chinese spy balloon, and they've been tracking it for several days. The Associated Press reports the balloon has been flying over sensitive sites to collect information. Montana is home to one of the nation's three nuclear missile silo fields at Malmstrom Air Force Base, according to the AP. Yesterday, all air traffic at the Billings, Montana airport was temporarily grounded. The military sent fighter jets, including F-22s, ready to shoot down the balloon if ordered by the White House. The Pentagon decided not to shoot it down over fears it could injure people on the ground. Officials say the balloon is flying well above commercial air traffic, and similar balloon activity has been documented in the past several years. Montana Governor Greg Gianforte posted on Twitter this afternoon saying, quote, from the spy balloon to the Chinese Communist Party spying on Americans through TikTok to CCP-linked companies buying American farmland, I'm deeply troubled by the constant stream of alarming developments for our national security. And flight data shows three military aircraft from Spokane also responded to this balloon sighting. We're continuing to reach out to witnesses who saw the balloon. Join us tonight at 10 and 11 as we learn more. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. In other news this evening, many people were shocked to learn that the person suspected in a deadly hit and run on East Sprague last week is just 16 years old. And that includes the family of the woman who was killed. They are speaking exclusively with Creme 2's Shannon Mowdy tonight. She's live in the Spokane Valley with how they are handling their unimaginable loss. Well, you can see behind me what's left of this memorial for Kimberly Allen. This is the spot on East Sprague where Spokane Valley investigators say she was hit while crossing the road after buying her groceries. A bunch of roses, a candle stub. I have too many pictures. Photos. These are the simple things left behind after an enormous loss. She always taught us the simple things and what to really hold on to in life and what really matters. Simple things that are left for Kimberly Allen, who Spokane Valley police say was killed January 27th when she was hit while crossing East Sprague. When we first heard that it was a hit and run, I think the anger, anger, furiousness. The family says they're sympathetic to the 16-year-old who police say was driving. Still, it's a mix of emotions. As I heard, you know, all I needed to hear, but just the picture I have in my mind. What's left behind for her four children? our images. She's the one with the match, shows up at the holidays and then with all everybody's matching outfit, telling you to look which way and every way for a picture. Yeah, like, the little things were we so important. We used to important. joke and make and fun of are. her picture time. And now they're so important. Important images meant to hold on to. I think above like anything, like she was a mom and a grandma and a great grandma. The Spokane Valley Police Department is still investigating this hit and run, and we have learned through a newly filed search warrant that they've taken the suspect pickup and are looking for more evidence there. But at this time, no charges have been filed. Live in Spokane Valley, Shannon Mowdy, Creme 2 News. All right, let's talk weather now as we get closer to the weekend. We are also inching closer to the return of 40 degree weather. I love the sound of that. <laughs> let's get right to our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Lagoo. Uh, yeah, we've got much warmer temperatures in the forecast as we head through the next couple of days. Let's dive in. Right now, we sit pretty warm here in Spokane. Current temps in the 30s still. 32 in Spokane, 31 over in Coeur d'Alene. You've already dipped into the 20s up in Deer Park. And overnight, we continue to watch those temperatures fall. We'll fall back into the mid to low 20s, depending on where you are. So temperatures are going to cool down quite a bit. 
but still remain quite a bit warmer than where we were earlier this week. When it comes to cloud cover, it's building in, but overall we are expecting to see a couple of peaks of sun early tomorrow before our moisture moves in tomorrow evening. Predominantly in the higher elevations, we'll get a little bit of snow. Then down low, I think it's light rain if we see much of anything at all. Unfortunately, this storm just doesn't have what it takes to get us here in Spokane or much of eastern Washington. What does eventually wind up happening is we catch a break Saturday as temperatures really start to storm. Let's talk snowfall totals quick. Up in the mountains, few inches all said and done. Good news down low. I think we miss out on a bulk of it. What starts as a little bit of a rain snow mix here in Spokane winds up being mostly rain and all of that snow melts about as quick as it falls. Could get about a quarter of an inch of rain here in town all said and done. Parts of the Palouse half inch to three quarters of an inch. That's some serious moisture. But over the next few days, temps are going to be on the warm side. When we're talking 40s, that's more reminiscent of where we expect to be in the beginning of March instead of the beginning of February. But believe it or not, today's 37 was about as seasonal as it gets. New at six tonight, a local anti-abortion group must now pay $850,000 in legal fees after a judge sided with the Spokane Planned Parenthood. This comes after a judge ordered the church at Planned Parenthood over to pay over $100,000 in damages for their disruptive protests. Rulings in 2020 and 2021 restricted the group's protests, citing ongoing efforts to interfere with patients' access to health care. In developing news tonight, within the last hour, the city of Lewiston confirming the bones found by an excavation crew at a construction site are, in fact, human remains. Creme 2's Nathan Hyun made the trip to Lewiston today. He's joining us now with what we've learned about that discovery. We just learned less than a couple of hours ago that the remains found here were, in fact, human. And I've been here throughout the day watching people dig the ground to try and find more remains. Police say that a biological anthropologist was called in and confirmed that the remains are human. Police also confirmed that no foul play seems involved and the remains are believed to be from the Nez Perce tribe, but police are still investigating on how long the remains might have been buried for. We've had some calls like this before, but nothing where it turned into what it is now, uh, where we've had anthropologists and things. Sometimes people will find a bone in a yard and we have someone come and it's you know, it's a dog bone or something. So this was definitely out of the norm for us, something we are not experts in. According to someone who worked on yesterday's excavation crew, the crew was digging around the bridge to make room for future construction. That's when the dig crew saw what they thought was a piece of old pipe in the soil. After further inspection, the crew found what looked to be a skull and bones at around waist deep and called police. I'm told police and investigators plan to be back out here again tomorrow and the walking trail under the bridge will remain closed until the investigation is wrapped up. In Lewiston, Nathan Hun, Creme 2 News. Staying in Lewiston, a Las Vegas woman has been arrested after she allegedly tried to smother a patient at the Idaho State Veterans Home. According to Lewiston police, nurses at the Veterans Home found the suspect Sandra McCarty reportedly on top of a patient with her hands over his mouth before nurses intervened. McCarty had left the scene before police arrived. The 54-year-old suspect's been arrested and is currently being held in the Nez Perce County Jail for one count of attempted first-degree murder. Sentencing is expected to begin for the man who stabbed his ex-girlfriend to death. Joshua Phillips pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and attempted murder nearly two weeks ago. According to court documents, Phillips' ex-girlfriend ended her relationship with him two days before her death. Court documents show she died of multiple stab wounds. Phillips also stabbed her five-year-old daughter seven times, but she survived. More than 600 Portland City workers are officially on strike tonight. They walked off the job at midnight after the city and union leaders failed to reach a contract agreement. Those employees work across multiple departments and handle everything from sewers and wastewater to transportation to certain parks and recreation. The city says it's offered pay increases for the average worker by almost $11,000 a year. They say that's about $5 more an hour. The two sides have been trying to work out a deal since the spring. They've met on night different occasions. Portland's mayor had previously ordered a state of emergency, which allows the city now to hire or reallocate staff to keep operations running. 
The move fitness on Regal is uh, now going to be relocating to a new location on Spokane's South Hill. According to Chris Bill Bell with NAI Black Commercial Real Estate Services in Spokane, Move will be moving into the former Albertsons building on 37th. He also says Move has a long term sublease for the space from Safeway. That new location is expected to open by midsummer or fall.